All right, so yes, everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, to Aya, Tatiana Benali, Yanishke, Koso, Nasha, Nanis, Ezra, Tatini, Nishwe, Nasheke, Dina, Eba, Shishin, Kimpatini, Dashike, Ado, Bitani, Dashinale. My name is Tatiana Benali. I am from the Navajo Nation. I work at the American Indian Community House and I help organize the social justice series. So thank you everybody for joining today. Um, that, it certainly means a lot, especially I feel like during this time is, you know, we need our community now more than ever. And we need to have like discussion about how to ground ourselves and what we can do to hold ourselves accountable to our community and continue to, to build and um, keep them in mind. Social Justice Series, if you haven't joined before, is an online space that is hosted by the American Indian Community House um, to discuss resources and information regarding Indigenous issues and conflicts that directly affect us. Um, through shared concern and efforts, we will discuss action, solutions, and the many different ways we can contribute toward the movement and change making. Online and Solidarity, led by and for Indigenous folks, we will focus on providing a space that is accessible, respectful, and in unity. This, like I've said many times before, is one of many events that the American Indian Community House has put on and is continuously putting on. We have online well variety. We have online fitness classes, um, community socials, Native Theater Thursday. So if you wanna continue to find um, stuff to do online, you can follow the American Indian Community House on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can also sign up for the MailChimp on our website to be included in like the weekly newsletter. The weekly newsletter has all of the events that um, we're going to be doing weekly. So if you want to keep up to date on that, that's certainly a great way to do that. Um, and some other quick housekeeping, shout out to Novo, New York City Census, New York Women's Foundation for continuing to help us provide the resources for our community and continue to do the work that we do. Um, yeah, so without further ado, I just wanted to kind of give an overview of the agenda. So today it's going to be very low key and I will um, enable the or disable the, the muting on the participants um, after I finish like talking, I guess, doing my, my little rant <laughs> in the beginning. Um, so the agenda from 6 to 6.15, introduction, brief overview, 6.15 to 6.45, go through a resource list, which is the handbook that I put into the chat. And 6.45 to 7.15 Q&A, but we can obviously do that since this is a very um, kind of a personal like Zoom meeting. So it'll be easy to have a discussion with um, people if you, if you want to participate. And then 7.15 to 7.30, closing remarks and each announcement. Although I'm sure like we'll be able to cover pretty much everything before that. So we'll just play it by ear. So I am going to screen share this resource list and I can also disable the muting so that you guys can unmute yourselves and chat. This, this um, 
this Zoom meeting is not being streamed to Facebook or YouTube like our previous one. So feel free to ask questions and interrupt me whenever you want to. This is what we've created. Um, just a compilation of our past social justice series and providing some context for how to engage into these issues. I mean, we all know like what's going on, but on top of that, we're thinking about the pandemic and other issues in our communities that are stacked on top of that. Um, so I guess kind of providing a lens here is what the community house was trying to do. And like I said, this is like a work in progress. It's something that we started this week and we'll continue to add to. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to send those to me and a reply to an email or whatever, whatever is is best for you. Yeah, here's the table of contents, introduction, some context for like preliminary steps before you start getting involved into social justice work and indigenous issues that are ongoing. So I guess we can just like read through this. It's pretty short, so um, it'll be easy to read through this. In this document, a tool for relatives and allies, this toolkit will serve as a list of resources for you to use when getting involved. It will also offer you indigenous issues to continue, continuously check in with support and amplify. In this digital age, news can oftentimes have a short lifetime, whereas completely following through with an issue means a commitment to the life ways, people, and wishes of that community. So with this, we're thinking about like tribal sovereignty. That's something that might be extended on in this toolkit as time goes on. Tribal sovereignty, so with colonialism, um, gentrification and all of that. And then there's just like the social justice series mission, which I've read earlier, contact information, and then we get into the steps. So step number one, whose land are you on? And this is just a quote for, from Native Land CA, which is a website. It's like a, a map website where you can figure out where, I'll just show you actually. Basically, it's an interactive map where you can figure out what indigenous land you're on. And it's pretty detailed, so it's kind of hard for my computer to use, but it's really cool. And has information on land acknowledgement and whether or not they're useful, what you can do further than acknowledging the land. And yeah, next step, who to contact, things to read. This is just like a great resource if you wanted to continue to do that work. And we have another one, which is similar here. And this is similar to the other website, just like an interactive map. 
obviously like these um, have like a lot of context behind them. There's history, like geographical history from before colonialization, you know, the life ways of the indigenous communities, which include like migration throughout the year, um, tribal alliances and whatnot. So it, it differs from time period to time period, but I believe like these maps are as they were in 1491. But just something to look at um, if you want to learn about the tribes who existed, the original inhabitants of whatever land that you're visiting or where you were before you moved to New York. Um, places where other people have um, have lived or are living, or if you just want to learn more about the ge geographical layout of the different tribes in the U.S. And this one needs to be expanded on, but settler colonialism, it's a vast topic. Um, but this is a really good book that I recommend reading called Red Skin, White Mask by Glenn Coulthard. He is an indigenous academic from the University of British Columbia. And this title is a play on Friends Fanon's, um, Friends Fanon's book, Black Skin, White Mask. Um, so I would definitely check out both of those. Step two, whose community are you in? Which is just an extension of the land question. Living in Lenape Hoking, we often find ourselves in a person of color's neighborhood. So some questions to ask yourself, knowing that is whose community are you in? And what is your duty to giving back to that community? What is your role? in gentrification and what can you do to alleviate that pressure on whatever community that you're in. Step three, researching the issues in your community. That's the furthest like extent of love, I feel like. Showing that you care about your community means learning about the history of that community in relation to capitalism. Being a good relative ally requires that you are committed to the well being of your community and other communities alike. Being a good relative and ally means that you are centering the words and work of Indigenous and people of color in your community. So, <clears throat> pretty straightforward. I think like something that was mentioned before, like further up is that issues tend to have like a short lifespan on Instagram and Facebook, and we never really get to see an issue fully through. So the best work that you can be doing is continuing to show up for your own community because you can see that work from start to finish and how that plays out. So that's just something to keep in mind is finding an issue within your community and seeing that through from start to finish. Step four, organizing in tandem. There are many forms of momentum that make up a movement. Participating in movements is more than frontline work. Recognizing how your strengths can be used to push forward the movement is essential. This means knowing yourself and knowing what a community you need. Consider the different roles from frontline organizing, monetary support, peer-to-peer -peer support, medicine, and et cetera, to best use your own resources. And I think this is um, 
very important because I feel like a lot of people think that, well, I guess a lot of people romanticize being on the front lines, but there's a lot that goes into making that happen. So just like, like this says, like know yourself, your strengths, and what resources you have, because there's a lot that goes into building a movement, and we all have some capacity to, to contribute. Um, general questions to ask yourself before engaging in frontline work. Are you a caretaker for others or a primary source of income? If you're arrested or hurt, will the people you look after be okay? Could being arrested just jeopardize your immigration status? Are you on parole? Do you have an open case? Are you at higher risk if exposed to COVID-19? Do you live with elderly or immunocompromised people? So just a, a nice little list of questions to give you some insight into what is at jeopardy if you're doing frontline work. So just be very cognizant of the risk which I feel like also makes you a lot more authentic in the way that you are um, contributing to the work. And here we have the past social justice series. So this is just stuff that you can check back in on throughout the week or throughout the month. Like I said before, like we often and lose sight of these issues after a certain period of time. And this is not like anything to be ashamed of. I think that's just like how social media works right now. Everything is very quick. The um, digital communication and, and news sources are, are just like that right now very, very quick. So we went ahead and compiled some resources from our past social justice series and also provided like a little bit of context for each issue. And we'll continuously like update these as the time goes on. So like Suedin, Shinnecock Nation, Mashpee Nation, COVID-19 in Southwest Indian Country, Missing and Murdered Indigenous Relatives, Cheyenne River Sioux, Oglala Sioux Tribe, Muncie, Delaware Nation, and Black Lives Matter, which we can go through some of these resources right now as well to share resources and like I said, feel free to pop in with like suggestions and whatnot. All right, so this is a great resource because it has everything on it. And you can kind of Yeah, go through everything. Very organized and nice reading, mental health resources, donation suggestion. Um, and what a lot of people are doing is putting these uh, links, like continuously sharing them on Facebook, Instagram. I mean, every, every little bit counts here. So, great resource. And we also provided like a few other, other resources, although I think some of these might not be accepting donations anymore. 
Um, so I would just double check before you donate so that you know for sure that they're accepting donations or if they're recommending other places to collect or to donate to. So if the Black Vision Collective, Reclaim the Block, Minnesota Freedom Fund, George Floyd Memorial Fund, Justice for Ahmaud Arbery, and Justice for Breonna Taylor. Obviously, there's a lot more. So like I said, feel free to, to share those with me if you have, um, have those on hand. But yeah. Um, does everybody have access to, to the link, uh, the handbook right now? Okay, let me go ahead and put that in the chat again. So this is the handbook. Ooh, that's a good idea. Um, Kaylee wrote, should there be a list of resources there under general legal support, COVID tips for protesting, et cetera. Yes, it's a great idea. Um, like I said, we just started this um, earlier this week, so it's still very much in the works. So I will put that as a note and those will be updated this week. Yeah, yeah, I could also email it to people. Um, I will Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Um, Kaylee, you had a question? If you go into the document settings, there's a little cogwheel. It should say um, who can share it or who can view it. And it says like anybody with this link can view, um, edit or view. Okay, okay, all right. All right, in the meantime, um, I just wanted to give some general updates as well. Um, next week, we are going to be checking back in with the Mashpee Nation. There were some updates to the whole shebang last week and really exciting news. So um, tune in next week for updates with the community members from Mashpee and It'll be a good time. And the week after, uh, we are going to be going down into the five Southern tribes. There is a lot going on down there with um, jurisdiction, I guess. It's a very kind of complicated, um, complicated to explain situation regarding like crime and actually Elizabeth do you have any um do you know about like the the five tribes like Mashoki and what's going on with the crime and jurisdiction there okay okay so basically in the past 10 years there has been crime in Oklahoma that are trying to be tried on the, the tribal reservations rather than the state. And so basically right now there are, they're, they're doing that again. There was a crime recently and the person that this has happened on Indian Reservation. And so this case went all the way up to Supreme Court. And what's at stake is either the there's going to be more native land in Oklahoma or it, it's really interesting. I, I'm the, the worst person to explain this, but um, just look out for that email. Um, maybe I can look up uh, an article that more, more 
um, that explain what's going on in the way that I'm talking about it right now. Um, did you guys have any questions about how to navigate through these sites here? This is again nativeland.ca. And then the other one. Yeah. Actually, I didn't really get to look at this one. Miss you all. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of these awesome videos that you can click on and further educate yourself on land acknowledgement for different areas this is pretty cool. Yeah, so um, something to look at. I wonder if we can like take a, uh, a five minute like breather to go and grab some water and I'm just going to continue to figure out how to um, send the thing to you all really quickly. I, I thought I fixed it, but I didn't. So the other thing that I was talking about, I, w I was able to find the link for that too. So I'll go ahead and share that with you. Just very, very interesting dealing with like land and jurisdiction in the South. We were going to do this social justice series for last week, but Obviously, there was a lot going on last week, so we are postponing it to two weeks from now. Um, so, Muskoki Nation had updates with a case called McGirt versus Oklahoma Supreme Court case. Um, the Muskoki Nation has an ongoing history with so called Oklahoma and the US regarding land and jurisdiction. Several crime cases have brought tribal sovereignty to the forefront in the face of disestablishment and challenges to U.S. jurisdiction over indigenous nations. So that's what's happening now. <laughs> Sorry for all of that. Um, yeah, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and also send some links for that because that is one of those topics that will definitely need some prefacing. It was really hard for me to understand. And um, I know in general, it, it will be like a very complex issue to wrap your head around. We're gonna go ahead and like re-ask some of these panelists that we had um, lined up for last week for two weeks from now, which include some people with like legal backgrounds and people that have been following this issue from start to finish in their own community. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and send you all some resources for that. Just to peruse and look through. With that said, um, does anybody have any other questions and suggestions? And feel free to unmute yourself. This, yeah, I'm sorry about like everything um, right now is kind of in a different format than what we're used to. So it's understandable if we're kind of 
apprehensive about engaging, but um, I think this is something that we want to continually incorporate into our social justice series is having these discussions. So yeah, feel free to unmute yourself. And um, if you have any suggestions for um, the handbook or if you had any thoughts on the past social justice series that you think you want to talk about again or whatever else you may you may want to say. I uh, go ahead at Maureen Reardon. Go ahead. Oh let me see. Yeah, I think you just have to unmute yourself. Here we go. Here we go. All right. Yeah, um, the information that you've just given us an overview of is something that I'd like to pass on to others. So in whatever way it's convenient for you to get it to me, Tatiana, that would be great. Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. I will be sending this handbook to everybody in an email that way you can access to it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. Where is everybody calling in from? Everybody still in New York City or if not, where are you calling in from? Oh yeah. We have somebody from Phoenix, Arizona. Hey Harrison. New Hampshire. New York City. Brooklyn. Great. <laughs> okay. That's it. Where are you calling? Oh, Brooklyn. Got you. I'm from Northern Alberta, from, um, um, Plains Cree from Northern Alberta, but I live in Brooklyn. Okay, okay, okay. Go. I remember you on the social justice, the last one that we had two, two weeks ago with um, Keith Mark Peters. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, that one was a good one. I'm hoping... It was, yeah, yeah. I'm hoping... And Actually, I was going to say, like, I didn't know, like, what tonight was really about or the whole series, but I just wanted to check it out. Um, I find the, this very major situation with um, issues of racism towards our Black brothers and sisters, you know, it's very um, important and interesting. And also, I think as an Indigenous person also comes with its challenges, right? I don't know how everybody else is feeling about it, but I don't think I'm alone in, um, I hope I'm not, in um, feeling some, like not surprise, but still disappointment. Because when I'm listening to Black leadership, people speaking on the mainstream media anyway, um, the majority of them are not connecting uh, their issues with Indigenous issues. Um, and I just feel like that's so, so fundamental and yet it's being overlooked. And I don't know how much of that has to do with the mainstream media. You know, obviously they often pick and choose what they want to have heard. Um, but I also see interviews with people where it doesn't seem like they're being edited. Um, I did hear Spike Lee the other night acknowledge, um, you know, that the issues of racism against Black people and slavery, how it, you know, it is connected and started with how we were treated from the beginning of colonization. Um, but at, do you know what I mean? It's a very complex thing, um, but I, uh, you know, I'm I'm still here in lockdown, so it's kind of just kind of like watching this thing unfold. Um, I have issues with my lungs, so I have to be very careful. Like I can't go out and protest, but I have mixed feelings about it because I feel like um, I keep hearing people say, "Oh, this issue started with slavery," and I'm like, "What? <laughs> really? Like that's so not where it started." And I feel like the thing is not going to get healed until 
people really and truly understand that the foundation of this uh, thing that's called America is it's flawed from the foundation up from the beginning of the history of America and Canada forward. Y you know what, y do you feel me? <laughs> yeah, Anybody? yeah, definitely. And I think like we are seeing it through this like lens of capitalism, like with, you know, people are forced to take stances. Um, we have like Ben and Jerry's, you know, like posting, um, political information and I don't know it's just it's very yeah like you said very interesting and very complex and um I think I have I was able to see a lot of um articles about how black liberation and indigenous um resurgence are you know they're interconnected and one needs the other. And I think that's the discussion we're gonna continually have throughout um, the aftermath of all of this. And Terrenson, would you be able to speak about um, your collective Desert Indigenous and maybe speak a little bit more about the panel that you're gonna be having and when, when that would be happening? And also, well, who I'm not sure who that is you just spoke to, but while they're getting ready, would you, could you send out the links to those articles? Because I'd be really uh, interested to, to to read them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Cool. Um, I'll keep I'm not. Up. I haven't. I have to admit, I haven't been going and looking out for those things as much as I could be because I'm just in my own challenges of trying to continue my arts practice through the pandemic and all the craziness. So. I've not been, you know, as on that as I could be, but uh, yeah, I'd be really interested to read them. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I just wrote that in my, my to do list. Cool, thank you. thank you. <laughs> yeah, and I think that'll be something that'll be nice for everyone to see on the, on the handbook as well. Just kind of interconnecting these um, issues. Um, but go ahead, uh, Harrington. Hey, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here. My name is Harrington. Um, I'm one of uh, Tatiana's friends. And um, I am part of an organization called the Desert Indigenous Collective. Uh, we're a small mutual aid group um, here in Phoenix, Arizona. And we mostly provide uh, mutual aid to uh, a lot of the folks here. Um, but as things are unfolding with uh, the Black Lives Matter movement and, you know, the resistance that's going on on an international level at this point, um, we wanted to kind of start a conversation for our fellow Indigenous folks who might not quite understand that, um, because there's a lot of information that's spreading around, and um, we wanted to show some sort of Indigenous solidarity. So we just started having talks the past week about how we can do that. So something we kind of landed on is maybe developing some sort of forum or a webinar or a panel uh, about indigenous solidarity and anti-blackness within indigenous communities. Um, mostly because uh, a lot of indigenous communities still remain to be um, racist to some degree, despite the, the racism they experience just as being indigenous people but also making people aware that Black Indigenous people also exist and why it's it's fundamental for us to be a part of that movement and finding ways to support it um, and support our Black Indigenous um, relatives as well. So right now we're just in early talks and we're trying to brainstorm, trying to do our research in terms of finding uh, potential panelists. Um, and I. That's one of the main reasons why I wanted to be part of this discussion here. I didn't know uh, where exactly this, 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 this discussion was going, but if anybody had any input or if we would like to partner up like our organizations, that'd be really cool as well. Um, so if you guys have any resources or know anybody, that, that'd be amazing. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's something that the community house would be interested in building with desert indigenous on further. Um, 
So yeah, I'll, I'll keep in touch with you, Harrington, about that. Uh, go ahead, Jeffrey Derensberg. Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, please give me a moment to introduce myself properly. Anke Ipshak Jeffrey Derensberg, Kakapo Ishak Yuki Yanamushkunulo. I'm Jeffrey Derensberg. I live in uh, what I call Bobancha, but what colonists attempted to rename New Orleans. Uh, I found this group through Jean-Luc Pirite, uh, the Tunica Black Sea Nation, who's a distant relation of mine. Uh, we are many of us from tribal nations in Louisiana. I'm a member of the Atakapa Ishak Nation, which is the Tunica Black Sea, of which John Luke is enrolled in. Many of our tribes are of mixed African and Native ancestry. That includes myself. Many Native people here had Negro on their birth certificate um, because that word in Louisiana just meant person who wasn't white in legal documents. That includes Jean-Luc, that includes myself, and many of us. Uh, there are large mixed populations of Black and Native people, including Louisiana's real population, uh, which is a major population in this city of people who often look Native, often look Black, often look white, and are all mixtures of all three. Uh, something I've noticed, I do a publication and I'm part of a collective called Bulbancha is Still a Place, where we promote Indigenous culture here in the city. And we have been going out protesting. We've been collecting uh, Black Lives Matter sayings in tribal languages, trying to translate it to as many languages as possible and making signs. And uh, what I have found is that we're getting some of our indigenous communities in Louisiana have been giving us pushback um, and saying, you know, things like, well, let's, uh, you know, why are you talking about this? African-American experience as if that's not part of our indigenous experience. But so I think like they often don't understand the interaction between indigenous people and African people here who were enslaved together. There were both indigenous and African slaves in this city up through the 19th century. And I think one of the, it's a crucial witness. I really appreciated what uh, your friend Harrison said because it is a crucial witness for us to discuss our shared experience and also that I have native relatives myself who have some internalized anti-blackness that it's a good time to shine a light on that and educate people and realize that it is one struggle. And then I have also, and it's also a good opportunity to educate some African-American people who might not realize how connected the struggle is to the history of colonialism and how that was a violent enterprise upon people of all ethnicities other than Europeans. And I, I, if you're looking for resources, I would encourage you to direct message me. Uh, I do have some, at least one member of my tribe is a major scholar of that topic, Andrew Jolivet at UC San Diego. Um, and I, I know a pretty good swath of the people who know about that. So feel free to message me or Jean-Luc, uh, he also knows the same people and would be happy to connect you with those people and maybe any resources you might wish to have. That's all I wish to say. Hiweo, as we say in our language, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. We have like a lot of wonderful resources already compiled. So, um, Jeffrey, I will also be in contact with you um, as far as like resources go and perhaps we can have um, an event with uh, with you and maybe John Luke, maybe expanding on a lot of this. I think that would be something that would be very useful for for our communities. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great. This is great. So yeah, I would love to be involved in that. Also, even just as a listener. Um, I, I mean, I'm not, again, I don't know how much is already happening. I've been wondering about that in terms of, you know, in terms of problem solving this obviously very deep. And again, yes, it's a complex issue, but from where I'm sitting, I'm just watching, thinking, <laughs> you know, in order for it to be solved, those connections do absolutely have to be made. And then also how much of it relates to, you know, culture and, um, what our indigenous cultures have to offer in terms of, you know, this is a moment for such deep cultural change 
And yet I feel like the, it's these foundational differences between, you know, Western European colonizing cultures and indigenous cultures that were the thing that clashed in the beginning. Um, so how do we, uh, if we can, um, make those connections and uh, partnerships with all people of color in on Turtle Island, you know, in terms of, I think that, I've, I'm not sure if it was Jeffrey or the other gentleman that was mentioning, it's like a lot of people, maybe I wasn't thinking so much about indigenous racism towards black people, but I'm sure that exists also. I was more thinking about just the lack of education within a lot of the black community about indigenous histories and the and yes the inextricable relationship uh between all of these issues of racism right because if we don't have those understandings and the partnerships moving forward i really don't th see this that there's going to be this fundamental change that's needed you know for this to be healed definitely um yeah, I think there are definitely like a lot of resources out there. Uh, Hannah just posted one from Dr. Adrienne Keen. Audrey, Adrienne Keen. Cool. <laughs> um, so you can go ahead and check that out. And that is in the chat box as well. So we're compiling some lists here of- Awesome. Black and Indigenous um, liberation and how they're interconnected. And that's good. So you can go ahead and check that out. Um, and I'm going to send a message real quick. I have a question. Are those things available? Like, if they're in the chat, we don't have access to the chat though after the Zoom session is over right yeah but i yeah i'm like compiling some of these resources especially like the link so i'll make sure to email those to everyone after awesome. the meeting is over thank you hi hi yeah um is there anything else that you guys would like to debrief on as far as what has been happening or maybe steps that you would recommend for continuously showing your solidarity with our Black relatives. I mean, education is definitely one of the most important things that you can be doing in this time. Um, yeah. There are ways I've seen um, a, a lot of stuff on Instagram, which is great. Um, a lot of people have been continuously sharing resources um, for how to contribute to the movement without money, with money, if you're able to go outside um, and get on the street, if you're not. Um, so I, I was just wondering if anybody had seen anything that works for them. Um, I can talk a little bit about what um, I've done just uh, donated some money and I was able to put uh, the link to you for resources into my Instagram bio. It's something really easy that you can do to show solidarity. There are also um, there's also like a YouTube video that you can just watch and the funds that are generated from the ads there will go directly to black organizations that are on, you know, doing the, the, the groundwork. And I was able to um, go to a rally and march in my community, which I am lucky to do. Um, but those are some things that I was able to do. If anybody wanted to share some things or maybe they just saw something online that seems uh, manageable, feel free to share. 
I also know there's like petitions out there too. So if you go ahead and go to the document that I have and scroll to the bottom, there's that link tree at the bottom. I think it's called like national resources. If you click on that, there are like a couple of petitions that you can sign. So that's also something you can do. Oh, okay. I guess people are having trouble unmuting themselves. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. It's okay. Thank you, Tatiana. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> My name is Hannah Thomas. So I took a donation. Um, I really, I love this book. I love that you made this handbook so much. I can't even tell you. It's beautiful. I adore it. Um, and I'm excited to look into it more. I was like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> um, I, so, um, for me, I was also able to march, um, but I had spoken to my father about like what he's doing because he's older um, and I'm very concerned about him going out, um, but he's very like, I've been shoved by the police before and you know, I don't care, like civil liberties. Um, and something we discussed is that not just donating money, um, but another way you can donate time is by cooking for people in your community um, even if you're not able to march, if you're able to go outside and, um, you know, bring water or make like pre-packed snack bags for folks who are marching. So that way someone else can take them and they can pick them up. Um, even volunteering to help organize, call people, um, is really beneficial. Um, and so he's been helping making, packing snacks for folks been marching which has been very good that's awesome that's a really really good idea and i think we're we're learning a lot you know um in this time that all of these tools that we can apply to you know, issues that are going to happen in the future so this is a learning experience for everybody and i i think for the most part there were a lot more people that are engaging in politics than normal, which to me was very exciting. And I guess continuing to be supportive of those people as they're tiptoeing into this territory of, you know, activism and social justice is very important. So you know, being supportive and sharing resources with people that are learning a little bit more about how to be politi politically engaged is so important because um, we don't want this, you know, to this momentum to just die down after this. We want, we want it to continue. Um, so that's just something Something that doesn't cost money but is very meaningful to be doing is just being very supportive of your friends and family that maybe were not politically engaged but are kind of engaging with a little bit at this point. Uh, Kaylee said on our local Facebook pages, we had a page going on of all the local businesses that had black owners that people could support. So just another way to, to show your support through your money. Everybody needs money to survive, unfortunately. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this is something new um, that we're gonna try to flesh out in the future. These discussion-based Zooms that are a little bit more private. Um, it's definitely a learning experience for me. I'm not like the type to, I feel like a lot of like the professors and teachers that do instruction on Zoom would often tell me that it's like, Zoom is like different from, you know, your day-to-day -day, like lectures because you have to be comfortable with the silence, which 
takes a little bit of getting used to for me. Um, so, but you know, it is what it is and everybody's learning. But thank you so much for popping in and we will have definitely a more cohesive discussion based Zoom agenda um, next time we do it. But like I said, um, next week we are going to be sitting in with our relatives from Mashpee Nation to hear the good news from them. Really important um, indigenous issue that we've been following since like March. So tune in to that. And I know this is not the end of what's going on in Mashpee, but something, some good news for once, which is really nice. And yeah, so thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, one last thing is next week, I believe we are going to be starting to do raffles, the community houses. So um, keep an eye on our social media for that. Basically, if you do the census and you save like the little receipt that you did it, or just screenshot a portion saying that you did it, you'll be entered into into a raffle there's jewelry like heated jewelry there's american indian community community house like shirts sweaters tote bags and hats um just something to look forward to and yeah if anybody has anything else to say or if you don't have anything else to say we can go ahead and call it good. All right. Okay, great. Um, I was wondering if there's a way we could somehow get a list that everybody could have with our Instagram handle so that we could all connect with each other that way in the future. Would people be into that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, if any, if you feel comfortable sharing your social media, put it into the chat. This is a great way to share resources too. Um, I'll put mine. But then, so will you gather them afterwards or yeah. should we just, yeah? Okay, cool, yeah, I awesome. Can, I can send those to people. Awesome. Thank you, Tatiana, for doing this. Yeah, no problem. All right, well, with that said, thank you everybody for joining in and continue to look over the handbook as next week it'll be different. There'll be more information inside it. Um, I will make sure to add your suggestions into the handbook. And we got another, another thing down here. And Harrison and Jeffrey, I will be in contact. So just look out for an email from me. And that's it. Thank you everybody for joining.